Few expected the July 2015 budget to be so far reaching over the next few years. The way tax is calculated is changing and you need to keep up. The amount of taxable income charged at the basic rate of tax of 20% is increasing by £135 to £32,000 from April 2016. The increased personal allowance will be £11,000 from April 2016, an increase from £10,600, representing a tax reduction to the basic rate taxpayer of £80 per annum. From the 6th of April 2016, all bank and building society interests will be paid gross, without deduction of tax. Each basic rate taxpayer will have a savings allowance worth £1,000, saving tax up to £200 per annum. A 40% taxpayer will have a savings allowance worth £500. Despite some predictions that the 45% top rate of tax was to be abolished, this was not mentioned or noted as a long-term objective. The taxation of dividends will be reformed from the 6th of April 2016. The 10% dividend tax credit is to be abolished. Individuals will have a £5,000 dividend allowance. An individual will pay no tax on dividend income received up to that amount. However, dividend receipts in excess of £5,000 will be taxed at 7.5% for basic rate taxpayers, previously 0% and 32.5% for higher rate taxpayers, previously 25%. The new dividend allowance will represent a significant tax increase for the owners of small companies who for some years have been able to extract profits from their businesses with a tax efficient mixture of salary and dividends. The Chancellor's justification was to make tax motivated incorporation less attractive. The new rules take effect from the 6th of April 2016 and provide an opportunity between now and then to ensure that you personally are in the best position possible for this and the next tax year. As an example, in 2015-16, Alan takes a dividend of £29,000 and his only other income is his salary from his company of £10,600. No personal tax is payable since it is all covered by his personal allowance and basic rate band. In 2016-17, Alan takes a dividend from the company of £32,000 gross, there is no tax credit, and a salary equal to his personal allowance of £11,000. He will pay tax at 7.5% on £27,000 of the dividend, this is after deducting the tax allowance of £5,000. He will pay tax of £2,025 on his dividend. From the 6th of April 2016, you need to save for personal tax on dividends extracted from your company. We are being asked if it would be better to operate as a sole trader. The answer is no. Your earnings will still be greater after paying dividend tax rather than changing the entity status. Using a comparative example of Alan earlier, then as a sole trader, his earnings after tax and NIC would be £38,095. This is lower than the net earnings of £40,676 as a limited company extracting salary and dividends. It should also be noted that Class 4 National Insurance Contributions for the sole trader is undergoing a consultation and our thoughts are that this will increase from 9% to 12%. These calculations are undertaken at 9%, the current rate. Most examples I am running for clients at present show net earnings will still be around £1,500 higher operating as a limited company rather than a sole trader or partnership. So what alternatives are available to extracting money from the company as a dividend? For higher rate taxpayers, any rents or interest on credit balances that can be paid are now far more advantageous and should be planned. If I have an additional £10,000 available in my company as a higher rate taxpayer to extract, 
Would I be better off to pay this as a dividend or to take a bonus? After paying corporation tax, I have available £8,000 as a dividend. From the £10,000 available, £5,400 would be payable to me, given an effective rate of tax of 46%. If the company was to pay a bonus, after payment of employers' national insurance, PAYE and employees' national insurance, the net payment available would be £4,900. This is £500 less than the payment of a dividend, an effective rate of tax higher at 49.1%. In answer to the question, dividends still are the most tax advantageous. We can see that if the £10,000 was paid in interest or rent, then the effective rate of tax is the lowest at 40%. The shareholder would retain £6,000. An alternative strategy, assuming that the director shareholder has taken out sufficient monies to live on, would be to leave the surplus profits in the company with a view to releasing a capital gain on an eventual sale or striking off of the company. This looks extremely attractive as the effective rate drops to just 28% for a company and where entrepreneurs relief is available on the sale or capital distribution, this rate drops to just 10%. From the 6th of April 2014, most employers have been able to claim an annual employment allowance of £2,000 to set against employers' national insurance contributions. This will rise to £3,000 per year from April 2016. However, one-person companies will no longer be eligible to claim the allowance. This will increase costs for sole director shareholder companies and affect the tax efficient amount of salary directors will be able to extract from their own companies. Will the Final Finance Act include the employment of a close family member such as spouse or child? You would think HMRC would be able to spot this tax planning point. If you have any questions on any of these important areas, please do not hesitate to contact us. We will continue to update you later in the year as more detail on these consultations is available to us. Thank you for listening today.